Good morning, St. James. It is Sunday, May the 3rd, the fourth Sunday in Easter. Welcome. We have a very special guest with us today. Our bishop is here for his visitation. Bishop Michael, welcome. We are beginning our service on in the service leaflet, which remember, there's a link right below this video, and I hope you downloaded that so that you can read along. Uh, and we will begin in just a moment. We're on page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be, be God's, God's kingdom, now and forever. forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many sign, wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in reciting the Psalm 23 responsibly, uh, breaking at the asterisk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you, are, if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. 
He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to uh, see your faces, at least, uh, in form of pictures on the pews. It um, is good to be here. I wish we could be in person, as uh, I'm sure you wish that as well. This is my last visitation to St. James, and uh, uh, not the way I or anyone else had uh, planned it, but it is uh, still good to be with you, at least electronically, this morning. And thank you, Beth, for this wonderful mask. I now have two purple masks, and uh, apparently uh, she says I have two sides. This is my serious side, and there's another side here that's the playful side. So I've got the serious side on today. So I wanted to begin this sermon uh, noting, first of all, that our gospel comes from the 10th chapter of John. And when you think of it, and you think of the 10th chapter, you think, well, that's probably about in the middle of John. But actually, we're only a couple of uh, chapters away from Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the whole passion narrative. What we really have here is John's uh, last attempt to talk about who Jesus is with Jesus' people before he walks into that passion narrative. And the image he uses, the one of sheep and shepherd. Now, from a practical standpoint, I have to say I've never seen uh, a, a real shepherd. Actually, I did once see a real shepherd when I was walking on the Camino de Santiago. And I don't really have very much relationships with sheep either. But I know enough to know that in the world of Jesus, shepherds were not very important people, except to the sheep, of course. And sheep are kind of stupid. So in this gospel lesson, when we hear this image of shepherd and sheep, it's really not one that's working for me very easily. It's kind of problematic. Probably because I don't really see myself as a stupid sheep, nor do I think any of you are, and I'm not sure I need the kind of shepherd 
Well, maybe I do, but it's just one of those challenging images for me. So let me tell you a different image, if I might. And I'm going to go way back to 1974, when I was first dating Marla. Now, my wife came from a, a, a family that lived on a farm in Oklahoma. They had a cattle farm there. And when I was dating Marla, uh, her father, Lloyd, had a very unique thing happen that year. He had his uh, crop, if you will, of little tiny uh, cattle uh, that got born that year. And for some odd reason, all of them except one was a little tiny bull. And he had decided not to castrate them. He was going to keep them and sell them as bulls. Um, and so this little uh, crop of about 10 or 12 bulls was in this small pen that uh, is fairly big, maybe as large, uh, somewhat larger than, uh, smaller than your sanctuary here. And, uh, but they were in this area. And um, I was going out to the barn that was on the other side in order to get something out of the barn. And I went out and got it and started to come back over. And all the little bulls came around me. And I was sitting on the fence. And they were entirely circling me and I had nowhere to go. I sat there wondering what to do. Now I'm a city boy, so I don't really know much about little bulls. Uh, apparently I probably could have just hopped down and walked across and they wouldn't have bothered me at all. Probably ran to the other side of the uh, in enclosure themselves, but I didn't know that. I was a, uh, a city boy, as I said, and so I just sat out there a while. And after a little while, uh, Marla's dad, Lloyd, came out with a little bull whip. And he got up on the fence and said a few words and cracked his whip a few times, and all the little bulls ran away. And I was okay, and I could get down and walk across and be safe. Now, that's what I think I need. I'm not sure about that shepherd and sheep, but having someone come with a bullwhip to move that which was troubling me away, that's something I can relate to. You see, in the world we're living in now with COVID-19, I feel like I'm on that fence again. And what I need is someone with some sort of bullwhip to get the problem to move to the other side of the area. And of course, what's doing it right now is social distancing. What's doing it is all of us taking care of one another. What's doing that uh, is wearing our mask and washing our hands and being thoughtful about how much we go out and when. And that's hard work. It is so easy to get to the point of thinking, well, I'm safe. I am distancing myself from others. And yet we know that this thing is very dangerous and it is so easy to stumble at some point. Now, of course, in truth, both of those images are good. Whether you think of a good shepherd who is the uh, one who takes care of the sheep and guides them to good pasture, or whether it's simply the guy with a bullwhip. Either way, we feel safe and secure as we allow God to be present in the distress we feel. Whether it's COVID-19 or something else, we need God to be present with us in our distress. Whether it's economics you're most afraid of now, whether it's the safety of someone you love that gets you up at night, whether it's the lack of social connections that you have right now, or whether it is something very different, maybe something that has absolutely nothing to do with COVID-19. There is in our lives always stress. There is always in our lives distress. And we are always in need of God's loving care. Now, perhaps more than ever, we need God and we need each other. And we need to be present to one another in love. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it in abundance. 
And so the real good question that we might ask ourselves is what does abundant life look like? Or what does good pasture look like? And I think it does mean that we are safe. And I think it does mean that we find ways to be connected with each other, uh, even through this crazy social distancing we knew we do. And it means that we reach out to those in need in our community more than ever. The other day I was on a phone call with our presiding bishop and all the other bishops of the church, and we were talking about the reopening of churches. And that's uh, certainly a topic that I'm working a lot, lot on right now. But someone on that call reminded us that we as a church have a lane that we ought to be in. You know, there's certain things the church does, and they really name just three things that the church does that we need to be a part of. And the first one was that we need to tell the truth. We need to speak the truth because it is truth that keeps us from fear. And so now more than ever, we need to be telling each other, not some fairy tale about how we might be saved, but truth. We need to listen to the doctors and the nurses and the others who are keeping us safe. The second thing we do, and this is what uh, your uh, rector is doing and, and the people who are helping today, is we need to maintain our life as a worshiping community. Because the one thing the church does that nobody else does is worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And we do that well. And we need to continue to do that well. Whether it's with word or, and sacrament or just word, we need to do that part of our lane and do it well. And the third part of our lane is living it with compassion for others. That is what we do when we reach out. That is what we do when we give our money to uh, the church or to other institutions that are helping people. That is what we do when we pray by ourselves at night for those we love. But that's the lane, folks. Tell the truth. Worship the Lord and be compassionate toward others. That's what good pasture looks like. My prayers to you as a community, may you be able to come back soon, uh, but as soon as it's safe, to be community together in this beautiful church. My prayers to your rector and the others who are making this all work. It is an amazing job that is being done. Take care of yourself, love one another, and be present to God in Christ this day and forevermore. Amen. Now I invite you to renew the vows of your baptism. This is something we always do when the bishop is around for his visitation, and so that should be on page five. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? 
I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page six with the prayers of the people. We pray to the Lord, to the God who is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. We pray for our communities, where the elderly confined to their homes and separated from family and support, for children removed from school, for those who have lost their source of income, for those who fear for their homes, for those who have no home, and for those offering extraordinary everyday kindness. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Help us in our time of trial. We pray for the young and for those in education, for those anxious about learning in this new environment, for teachers worrying about their charges, and for parents who are suddenly teachers. Lord, you are our refuge and strength. Let us Let not be afraid, afraid even, even though the world has changed. changed. We pray for workers, for all medical staff and hospital workers, who go to work knowing the risks they face, for medical researchers seeking ways to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for farmers, delivery, and shop workers keeping the nation provisioned, and for cleaners fighting the spread of infection. Lord, be with us in our time of need. Help us, Help us to do what is in hand of us. And, and give us grace to help others do what is asked of them. We pray for the world, for the leaders of the nations and their governments, for areas most besieged by the pandemic, for broken places where health care and resources are scarce, and where the pandemic brings further suffering, and for wisdom and guidance for all those in authority. We pray. Lord, may the nations hear your voice. And know that you, you are God. God. We pray for those who are sick, for those afflicted with coronavirus, for those with other illnesses and conditions which leave them vulnerable, for those with poor mental health, for all who suffer, remembering especially those we now name. For Carol, for Dawn, for Bob. Lord, we trust in you because your love is constant. Bring us Bring comfort, comfort and healing, for you, you are always willing to save. We pray for the church, for our fellow members in the body of Christ throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, the clergy, lay ministers, and all the people who are in their care, for our hospital and hospice chaplains, for all who minister to the sick and the dying, for the people of St. James, keep us and all those we love and all this whole world from illness and infirmity before our time. Deliver us from fear, isolation, and despair. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Keep, keep us fearless and proclaiming your word and works, works and, and make us be light in the darkness. We pray for those who have died, for those taken suddenly, for those taken unexpectedly, for the families they leave behind, for their friends, for those who have died alone, and for those who have no one to remember them. Father Graham Smith. Lord, may those who have waited for you and hoped in your word know your steadfast love they face to face. We offer up our hopes and fears, our joys and sorrows to God, our refuge and strength. Lord, listen to our prayers and hear the voice of our supplications, as we who trust in your word eagerly wait, await your help, for you are the God of our salvation. 
This we ask through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. with you. Let us pray. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to asperge you. We're going to we're going to tie this up here. I'll teach you a trick about that. Yeah, I could use several tricks. Wait a minute. Quite so close. When we do aspergies, we are doing them because we believe that this is one of the ways in which we remind you to remember your baptism. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, don't drop the bowl. You'll be in so much trouble. There we go. Cool. I gotta get this kid in wet. <laughs> Remember your baptism. Thank you. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And now let us uh, turn, turning to page eight, let's, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life is short, and we have little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us, so be swift to love and 
make haste to be kind and made the divine mystery which is beyond our ability to understand but who made us and loves us and travels this way with us bless you this day and forevermore amen amen, amen. hallelujah hallelujah let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit thanks, thanks be, be to god, god. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah 